Hello everyone. I would like to present Global Inverse Kinematics via Mixed Integer Convex Optimization. This work is done jointly at TRI and MIT. In Inverse Kinematics, we want to find robot postures satisfying certain constraints. In this video example, we want the robot hand to reach a certain pose while keeping its center of mass above the foot support region. Inverse Kinematics is one of the most fundamental problems in robotics. In the era of deep learning and robot doing backflipping, you may wonder why I am interested in this fundamental problem. Well, to me, most IK solvers do not always work very reliably, especially for complicated problems. For example, if we want to use this robot arm to clean the dishwasher, we might impose a constraint that a gripper pose should enable a proper grasp. So instead of specifying one single desired gripper pose, there is a whole set of possible gripper poses. Also, we want our posture to be collision free. This can be a challenging problem to many IK solvers, that they cannot guarantee to solve the problem 100% of time. Here is another example. We ask, is it infeasible for the little dog to stand on these stepping stones? Most IK solvers cannot answer this question because first, they do not certify global infeasibility, and second, the solver needs to assign each leg to one of the stepping stones. There are exponential number of stepping stone assignments, and it takes too long for the solver to enumerate all combinations. Moreover, the IK solvers can fail on even simple problems. Here, we want the robot hand to reach that red sphere. The IK solver fails. This is the best solution it finds. But that red sphere is reachable. The IK solver fails because it only searches within a local neighborhood of the initial case, while the solution is far away and the initial case is singular. To remedy all these problems, we want to come up with an algorithm that can solve the inverse kinematics problem reliably, even for complicated constraints. By reliably, I mean, first, when the IK problem is feasible, then the algorithm can always find a solution. On the other hand, when the algorithm cannot find a solution, it proves that the IK problem is globally infeasible. Here, we show some results by running our algorithm. On the left-hand side, I show the collision-free posture for a robot arm to grasp a mark on the clutter table. On the right-hand side, our algorithm can prove it is globally infeasible for the little dog to stand on these stepping stones. There has been a lot of research on solving IK problem. First, there is an analytical approach, that if we only have equality constraints, and if the robot structure is simple, then we can solve the IK problem in the closed form. The shortcoming of this approach is that it is not suitable when we have inequality constraints or when the robots are complicated. For example, if we want to find the posture of the little dog standing on their stepping stones, the region of each stepping stone is described by inequality constraints. Thus, analytical approach does not apply. On the other hand, there is a iterative numerical approach in which it solves the IK problem through gradient-based nonlinear optimization. This approach can handle complicated constraints and robots. The shortcoming is that it can get stuck at local minimum due to non-convexity of the problem. The key idea of this paper is to relax the non-convex constraints to a union of convex constraints which can be solved by mixed integer convex optimization. In the next few slides, I will explain how we shall apply this idea to IK problems. The non-convexity of IK problem originates from the non-convex SO3 rotation constraints. So we will focus on rotation first. There are several ways to represent a rotation, such as using axis, quaternions, etc. Here, we choose the rotation matrix representation, since the position of a point after rotation is a linear function of the rotation matrix, while it would be nonlinear 
if we were to choose other representations. The SO3 constraints on the rotation matrix include each of its columns has unit length, and two columns are orthogonal. Finally, a cross product constraint to rule out flipping from rotation. It is easy to see that these constraints are non convex. For example, for the unit length constraint, if we take two vectors with unit length, their convex combination does not have a unit length. Thus, the constraint is non convex. We will apply the idea mentioned in the previous slide to relax the non convex SO3 constraints as unions of convex constraints. How shall we do that? Let's first look at the unit length constraint, which can be expressed as the summation of quadratic terms equals to 1. Here, I plot the curve of one quadratic term. Although this curve is non convex, we can cut it into smaller pieces and compute the convex hull of each small piece. We then introduce a slack variable w as the approximation of the quadratic term by requiring that the point w to be within one of the convex hull. This can be formulated as a mixed integer convex constraint. For the orthogonality and cross product constraints, they can be expressed as a summation of bilinear terms in the form w equals to x times y. Here, I plot the surface of bilinear term w equals to x times y from two perspectives. Although this surface is non-convex, we can compute its convex hull as a relaxation. On the left-hand side, I show the panoramic view of the non-convex surface together with its convex hull. To obtain better relaxation with higher accuracy, we can cut the original surface into smaller pieces and compute the convex hull of each small piece. On the left-hand side, I again show the original surface together with each small convex hull. So we have relaxed the non-convex XO3 constraints as unions of convex constraints. How shall we use this SO3 relaxation? We will represent the kinematics of the robot in its maximal coordinates, with both link position and orientation as decision variables, and require that the link rotation matrix to satisfy the SO3 relaxation. We also need to impose the kinematic constraints that two links are connected together through a joint. To do so, we impose a position constraint on the child link and an orientation constraint on the axis of the connecting joint. Both constraints are linear with respect to the decision variables. We can handle a rich set of kinematic constraints, including both equality and inequality ones, such as joint limits, position constraints, orientation constraints, etc. In the bottom, I visualize one scenario of our IK problem that we want the robot foot to be within some stepping regions, also its right hand to be within a bounding box, and its head camera is gazing at its right hand. Moreover, we can handle collision avoidance constraints. We do that by representing non-convex collision free space as a union of convex small regions, as shown below, and require that link points to be within one of the small convex collision free regions, which again can be formulated as a mixed integer convex constraint. There are many approaches to segment the free space. On the right hand side, we use a naive approach to represent the free space as unions of bounding boxes. Here, I quickly summarize our IK algorithm. With our SO3 relaxation, we can solve a mixed integer convex optimization problem to find approximate solutions to link position and orientation. We then project the approximate link rotation matrices back to SO3 in the closed form to find the joint angles. There are two possible outcomes when solving the mixed integer convex problem. If the optimization is infeasible, then we prove that the IK problem is globally infeasible. If the optimization is feasible, then we find solutions 
that approximately satisfy the kinematic constraints. We apply our algorithm on a seven dwarf robot arm to find collision free postures such that the arm can grasp the mark on the cluttered table. Since we solve the IK problem globally, our approach finds multiple collision free postures instead of a single one. Our approach can also detect infeasibility. On the left hand side, our solver finds a poster for the arm to grasp a wine bottle on the table. On the right hand side, if we put a wine fridge in between the arm and the bottle, then our approach proves that it is globally infeasible to find a grasping posture. We also apply our approach to the little dog. It finds multiple postures for the robot to stand on a different set of stepping stones. This demonstrates that we can search over all possible stepping stone combinations simultaneously. We put the stepping stones farther away, and our approach proves it is globally infeasible for the little dog to stretch its legs so that it can put each of its feet on one stepping stone. Our approach proves the infeasibility of all combinations simultaneously. Finally, we test our approach more thoroughly on a six dwarf robot arm. We require that the end effector of the arm to reach each sampled point with orientation shown in the bottom left. This IK problem can also be solved analytically, and we compare our results with the analytical results. For the green and blue dots, our approach agrees with the analytical approach, that they both think that the point is either reachable or unreachable. There are also some red points, which are actually unreachable, but our mixed integer optimization is feasible. This is because our approach solves a relaxed version of the original non-convex IK problem, and the red dots correspond to the relaxation gap. In this case, the solver finds a robot posture that almost reaches these red points. It is also worth noting that only about 2% of points are red, indicating our relaxation is relatively tight. We show the computation time on the robot arm. On the left hand side, we show the histogram when our approach finds a solution. The average computation time is about 4 seconds, so it is not fast since we are solving the problem globally. The good news is shown on the right hand side, that in most cases, our solver spends less than 10 milliseconds to detect a problem being globally infeasible. So it is generally really fast to detect the infeasibility. To conclude, we present an inverse kinematics solver that can reliably solve the problem globally with complicated kinematic constraints. The key enabler is a mixed integer convex relaxation of the non-convex SO3 rotation constraints. With this approach, we can either provide global infeasibility certificates when the optimization is infeasible, or find approximate solutions when the IK problem is feasible. The code is open sourced in Drake. In our future work, we want to add dynamic constraints into the problem to solve a trajectory optimization problem through context, or a grasp planning problem 